Hi, and welcome to the channel. I want to share a watch I've had in my collection for some time now. It's a watch I've owned since 2019, and it's notable for so many reasons. This is IWC's other integrated sports watch. Let's begin. By 2019, I had a small collection made up of a Seiko and a Casio. I started to feel I was missing an all steel sports watch. I then set about doing some research, which included avoiding all of the popular models because I didn't want anything too popular and I wasn't prepared to pay those types of prices. I then came across the IWC GST chronograph. And this watch is interesting for so many reasons. Here's a little bit of background. It was the mid to late 90s and mechanical watches were seen as luxury items thanks to the watch industry's pivot after the quartz crisis. Watch brands found a creative way to make us care about mechanical watches again, through watch development and marketing. Creating a distinction between wearing a quartz watch and owning a luxury watch. See, this was no longer about accuracy or telling the time. This was now about status and aspirations. By the 90s, there was even more experimentation, not stopping at just gold or other precious metals, but now more exotic materials like titanium, ceramic, and carbon fiber. There was also the rise in complications and grand complications. Behind some of these experimentations was watch brand IWC. At the time, IWC was being led by one Gunter Blumlein. By this time, there was only a few real heavyweights in the watch world. Jean-Claude Biver, Genta, Philippe Stern. But one name we don't hear enough of is Blumlein. So Blumlein was the head of LMH. This was an umbrella company for three watch companies. These watch companies were JLC, IWC, and a little company he wanted to reintroduce to the world called A. Langenson. Now that's quite a collection of watch brands to own. This man was not only important to this watch, but also to the watch world. He was one of the key figures in the watch industry who wanted to put premium watchmaking front and center. He wasn't scared of the quartz crisis at all. He actually saw it as an opportunity. He famously said he wanted to end watch boredom. And this meant two things, developing exciting watches and creating excitement around watches. The excitement led to creating very direct advertising aimed squarely at men and a new, younger market. This also led to the creation of legendary watch models, such as the romantically named Distiero Scofusia and the GST models, including the Aquatimer and this chronograph. While Blumlane was putting JLC back on the map and introduced A. Langenson's first collection to the world, Grand Complications, Pilot Watches, and these sports references became his signature collection at IWC. It looks fantastic. It also has a history with a key watch figure. It's also an IWC integrated sports watch that isn't the engineer, so it's quite strange in that sense. If you sit this watch along all the other integrated sports watches in the world, it would hold up pretty well design-wise. It's a watch that's both sporty and, dare I say, dazzling. A perfectly round bezel and case and angular lugs giving it a chiseled industrial look. 
The bracelet looks dangerously familiar to a famous reference from Patek Philippe. They both share the H-Link bracelet with polished center links, but they definitely are on total opposite sides of the character spectrum. The Nautilus being softer and more rounder, and the GST definitely more chiseled, sporty, and again, industrial. I was originally interested in the titanium model, but then after some more research, I decided on the steel reference. Being a long-term owner of this watch, I've noticed some really stark differences compared to owning a watch like a Seiko. The big difference is the tolerances. On a watch like this, they just feel much tighter, sharper. Everything seems to be plussed in lots of different ways. Now, don't get me wrong, I own a Seiko where the quality of the Seiko is really high. Uh, there's some fantastic finishing and really great detail. And there are lots of affordable watches which can definitely feel like they are worth 10 times the price they actually are. But there is definitely something more happening here when you start to look at these Swiss watch brands. And I've definitely noticed it owning an IWC. The other difference is in the feel and the sound. Everything about the feel about this watch just feels fantastic and feels better than other watches that I've owned uh, that are more affordable. When winding a watch like this, it definitely has a silkier grainy sound rather than just the mechanical sound. When you look at the subseconds, it has a nice sweep rather than a tick, which is another refinement of a watch like this. Even changing the date has a really satisfying considered feel versus some of the other watches in my collection. There's such a fantastic focus on all the small details and such a fantastic focus on refinements that just elevate a watch like this beyond some of the other watches that I own. And I can only imagine that's plussed even more the further up you go towards higher end watches. So what's missing from this watch? What stops it from being a slam dunk? Not being able to change the bracelet and swap it out for a rubber strap. and that pretty much sucks. I would definitely enjoy this watch more if I could swap out the bracelet for a rubber strap. And what's annoying is the GST Aqua Timer is available on a rubber strap, but this isn't. So yeah, maybe it was a victim of its time, but that's a real shame. I would also like having a brushed finish all over the case and the watch instead of just parts of the bracelet. Because of the polishing on the case and parts of the bracelet, it does make it a little prone to scratches. And lastly, the domed sapphire crystal has no anti-reflective coating, so it can be reflective in the sun. So those are some of the things that stop this being a perfect watch, but instead it's a great watch. And for the price of a Tudor, you get a lot of quality and something that's quite unique. So where does this sit in my collection? It's become my occasion watch. I don't wear it every day. It's a watch I wear for special dinners and birthdays and basically occasions. The bracelet and the finish gives it definitely an occasional feel. Similar to a Nautilus, it feels a bit dressy. Uh, it wears a little bit heavy and I think that's a bit too much for an everyday watch.
It's definitely an odd watch considering IWC's history with integrated sports watches. The famous Ingenieur line is what's considered the go-to IWC steel bracelet sports model. It's probably considered their only integrated sports model, but the GST is their other integrated sports watch and introduced by another watch legend. There's also one last thing about this watch that makes it a bit curious and a bit special. A lot of the DNA in the GST can be seen in IWC's references today. The easily removable H-links. The case design. IWC's experiments with materials. The chronograph and date layout. This can all be traced back to this watch. The GST offers a lot as a watch and offers a lot historically for not much at all. Finding a watch like this makes collecting watches quite fun. <laughs>